the ducks always just like trying to make sure that they somehow get value when they don't go for the Punisher on other lanes, and that was shut down from the start from Team Expert. Yeah, it really was. I was expecting a little bit more, especially around those fights, but hey, it didn't work out for the playing ducks. And now going into game number four, Team Expert has a one level or one victory lead over their opponents. They're up two to one. If they get one more victory here, they'll shut out the playing ducks on this Friday. And right now, they're looking like they are starting to really hit their stride. That was a four level victory towards the end over their opponent. So if you're the playing Ducks going into the next game, you've got to be ready because this is going to be a difficult one. Yeah, maybe trying to get Medivh in play here once again. I still, I would really like to know what exactly the thought process behind the Vala build was as well, since around the Shrines you just can't fight properly. It makes it really difficult for you to put the pressure in. I'm not saying that they would have won it if they went into another build. I think the coordination and the draft that we saw from Team Expert was just a bit too strong but also mirroring a global when ETC started to go into uh, stage dive. Again, I didn't expect it. I thought with Leyline Seal, Mosh bit 100%, but then there's no global on the other side, so you yeah. can really just outplay them. The Haka was still up on uh, in the draft, if I'm not mistaken. He here. Was. So that's an, uh, another hero that we oftentimes see on the map for that very reason, and there was just no global play at all. In the entire series, actually, global heroes have taken a very... A huge step back. We have seen very, very little of that just happening. Mostly it was around stage dive, ETC, if so. So, yeah, next map maybe focusing a bit more on the macro game might be an option here, but of course it comes down to the map choice as well. Well, speaking of global heroes, let's talk about the global cheers right now as we are getting closer and closer towards that Arcane Chaos Lizard. Only about 870,000 away from there as we continue to keep on climbing up. So let's go ahead and see if we can get it soon. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Proud Almost of you. there. Arcane Chaos Lizard, man. 20 million is the goal. Getting closer and closer because of you guys and your generous cheers, man. So keep it up. Let's go ahead and get ready for our next battleground. Tomb of the Spider Queen is going to be chosen here. We're going to pick it up by Expert. All right. So Tomb once again. Yeah, our Tomb game so far were super interesting here today. We had a match where Arthur's went into Syndragosa and Johanna chose Falling Sword. Not gonna lie, it was a really fun game. I would not mind that again. I doubt that it's going to happen in this series, but that was definitely an interesting approach. So the Arthur Syndragosa flanks were pretty exciting. Mm. Expert could have a certain strategy up on this map. They always are good for the odd pick every now and then. But of course, when we're talking about playing ducks, the same is true. Medivh had a huge impact so far in most of the games. I expect him to make an appearance here again. And for Chris, maybe Vala. <laughs> it's just just an educated guess. Looking into your eight ball there, huh? Yeah. Getting all set up here. Yeah, if you did miss that Johanna game and the Arthas game, they sent her ghost into the Falling Sword. You can check it out, of course, on our YouTube with the HTC Esports. Just look that up and you'll be able to find it. It was game number two on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Quite the fun series yeah. between Team Liquid and Trick Esports. Unexpected results overall, but still a good one. Yeah, definitely check it out if you haven't seen it yet, if you just tuned in. That was definitely... It was definitely a bit of a highlight. Yeah. Even they had a lot of fun, I think, with that. But yeah, so heading into our next game, this could be the end for the Ducks in this series. And for Team Expert, this would be a big step forward. They already struggled quite a bit in the standings when they lost against TGG. And of course, against Team Dignitas, that put them into a very awkward spot where they already said, if Dignitas doesn't struggle, if they at some point don't stumble, then we might not be able to qualify for the HTC finals at BlizzCon directly and might have to go through the playoffs. But every single position here, of course, matters. So that's why they're going to try everything to make their life as easy as possible. And you never know. Dignitas has lost a couple of unexpected matches in uh, part one of phase two. So that could happen again, even though Right now, they look absolutely fantastic. For now, Team Expert needs to focus on themselves. Let's go ahead and move straight into Tuma Spider Queen. The playing ducks open up with a Vala ban. Maybe it was a misclick. I thought they were going to pick it. <laughs> like, I didn't expect the Vala ban on that. No, I did not either. Yeah, apparently Chris has lost all faith in Vala. He <laughs> feels that he feels that Vala, his unofficial girlfriend, has betrayed him. And that betrayal was so big on the last map that he just said, no, I don't want her in my life anymore. Not as a pick, and I don't want to see her in the game. Or Sport Billy came in and said, we're not picking Vala. Bammed it out right away. I like my explanation a lot more. I like the other one. It's more savage. Okay. I like savage stuff. All right. Since when? When did that Since happen? about <laughs> three minutes ago. 
<laughs> okay, fair enough. All right, Team Expert setting up for their ban. I'm wondering if they're shocked by that, not expecting the Vol to come out. Nope, they go ahead and continue to ban out. They're one of their favorites to ban, the Tassadar. What do we want to see from Chris here? Chromie? Lenara, or Tychus, or Chromie. All right, so... Or leaning. It, yeah. Those are his four heroes. I wouldn't mind Chromie to bring the memes back, but besides that, Rega as the first pick. So, again, when we're talking about the map here, a few heroes to highlight uh, as Tassadar is already banned out. We still can see ETC for setups. Medivh is actually huge, so I would expect ETC, Medivh, something along the lines of those two. Um, the Haka can make a difference here. Chromie could be played again by Nick. Already showed it on the last map. And for the bot lane, I wouldn't be too shocked if we are seeing a Sonya once again. The Ducks love to play here with Eternal in particular, and Expert are uh, in the slot where they could pick it away. Yeah, I think for the tanks, we're going to have EGC versus Johanna again, no matter what. It just seems to be the go-to mm. for both Bad Bidding and then look over at Nande, and he loves to go to that Johanna. Yeah. So. I think Johanna fits here as well, yeah. really well. It really does. We'll see here. Team Expert still thinking about it. Their first and second pick is going to be the Grey Main and the Dahaka instead. All right, so no early ETC for them. Dahaka for the bot lane and Grey Main. Medivh hasn't made an appearance yet either. So if the Ducks don't pick Medivh, it could still end up with a ban on Medivh. For damage dealers. Okay, there's Johanna. It's expected. They love to play her. Fits the battleground. Mm -hmm. The wave clear. That engages. There's the Lenara for Chris. Okay. Who bans Medivh? I mean, you put it on the Ducks here, right? No matter what? If I was the Dex, I would probably ban him, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Expert doesn't need to really worry about it too much. Dahaka gives you flanks, helps you control the portals with the other tank as well. I don't know. I think Team Expert shouldn't ban it here. Instead, other options they can look at. They can ban it on support if they're afraid to double support with Lenara, which is typical. You do usually see it. Yeah, Oriel can be a big deal with Lenara, of course. There's also Malfurion, which has seen a huge spike in play when it comes to Towers, or, uh, sorry, to Tomb of the Spider Queen, mm -hmm. just simply because you have the added... You have so much value out of the Moonfire build alone already. Sometimes we still see Strangling Vines, which can be quite nice, but overall it's all about Moonfire. Another hero you could ban a solo laner, and that's what they do. They ban Malfiel, so... Uh, no Malfiel against the Haka, so Eternal has to deviate into a different hero. And now they're playing Ducks, the moment of truth, do you ban Medivh, yes or no? And yep. indeed they do. And now Team Expert should be able to grab ETC and a support here, right? Probably, yeah. Yeah, just get your engage. All set up and good to go. Stukov is up and available. Uther still great with ETC. I mean, with Rega being picked, you can still play around, yeah, as you said, Uther. Mm -hmm. Especially if you plan on picking ETC. The one problem that you, of course, have with Uther is that Lunara can still be a bit of a nuisance. You have one thing that mitigates it a little bit, because Proc Rock is usually the talent that you take for ETC on this map. Sure. And you complete it real quickly, then you have a bit more heal that can definitely help in these situations. The only question that you have to ask yourself is, do you feel it's enough for yourself? It, it depends on how much you get poked, of course. Mm -hmm. If you uh, commit to quick, fast, decisive attacks, then uh, it should definitely be enough. But yeah, so Uther would be one option. But they head into Stukov instead, and they have Kel'thas with that setup as well. So a lot of AoE damage on their part already. Good poke on the side of Greymane. They have Kel'thas that they can also then use where to just like simply interrupt some of the, of the turn-ins. And overall, Wave Flare is just absolutely fantastic on their end. Yeah. This also gives them flexibility for their final tank. They can move into a new bracket if they feel like Cocoon would be useful. Mm -hmm. EGC, if they really want to move in for the fight, get the Prog Rock. Playing Ducks on their side will need an offlaner. And potentially that second support. Aryo makes sense with Lenara. Team Expert, just you wait there. It's going to be an AD already picked that we're going to see right now. They shifted a little bit, but Benny is playing Kel'thas right now, and AD already jumps on the last position on Probius. Mm, you think so? <laughs> yeah, totally. That's definitely going to happen. <laughs> now, AD already should be on Kel'thas, yeah. If this was Hana Mines, I would believe you. I think Hana Mines is the only Probius map right now that he can be good on. Yeah. There you go. You're welcome.
There's no such thing as a Proviot map. Ariel and Sonya. I mean, Ariel doesn't shock, and we talked about Sonya earlier as well. Mm -hmm. I could have seen Sonya either being banned or taken by Team Expert because the Ducks have such a huge priority on her. And now Ooh. that Malfiel was banned, that makes a lot of sense. Are we going to get the first win with Garrosh in Europe? It could be. I mean, maybe. Garrosh throws into a Kalthas Gravity Lapse and the Haga Tong. If that actually happens, they throw him and they catch him in the middle of the mid throw with a Gravity Lapse. That'd be impressive. Yeah. We talked about, you guys know what a kidnap combo is, right? So you have stitches. what? Shush. You have stitches, and you simply, you hook, you gorge, and then you just try to like kidnap the hero, and you have a portal on mid -Eve. We were actually asking ourselves the other day, what is the max distance that you can bridge with five heroes? Because I think you have to have stitches, mm -hmm. because you go to the hook, you get the gorge, then you have mid -Eve, and so you go through the portal, and then who waits on the other hand? So you could actually think about just like Garrosh throwing them. Mm -hmm. Atana's God Swap is another option. We had someone else. What was the other one? We had one more, and we didn't know which one we would pick, which one has the bigger range. It was between Garrosh and Atanas for the swap ranges, yeah. and we had one more hero that can really just like push you away. Oh, yeah. You can False at Mighty Gust. False at Mighty Gust. Yeah. And you can even think about Stukov. Yeah. So Massive like Shove. So Doesn't Massive Shove just trump everything if you don't have anything in the way? Probably. So should we just eliminate him? Yeah, we just, give a, we just, <laughs> just get Stukov and four other heroes. That's all you need. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get ready here with game number four. We're gonna That's see. actually something to think up. about. He's trying to shut you down because it's a really scientific experiment that someone out there has could. to do. Yeah. Get out there. Get us some video proof. Put it on the internets. We'll check it out. If it's not on the internet, it didn't happen. To the left side, in game number four, we have the playing ducks with Wolf, Joe on Rega, Chris on Lunara, Eternal on Sonia, Nanda on Johanna, and Sport Billy on Oriel in game number four of this best of five series. On the right side in the red, team expert, Kirsten will be playing the Stukov. We're going to have a thorough playing to Haka, ADRD is playing Kael'thas, going to have Nick on the gray main, and Bad Binny will be looking to get a victory with Garrosh here in Europe. It was a really moving series so far and also a bit of a love story involved where Vala betrayed her one true love, Chris, and was therefore shut out of the cra tra draft and Lunara then finally taking over. Would you say an arrow hit the heart of Chris? A poison spear. A poison spear. So sad. All right, playing Ducks versus Team Expert here. Let's go ahead and pop it up. Wave clear, looking pretty darn good here for Team Expert. Playing Ducks himself have pretty good wave clear too between Sonya and Rhaegar. We'll get better at level 7 when we have the Splinter Spear and the Thor 1 Vines at level 10. Also, Johanna floating around, so we'll see who gets the upper hand. There is one issue to be aware of that Garrosh is always a menace in the early game, so watch out for those combos. Talking about combos and also about builds a little bit, you already mentioned Garrosh, but the interesting part about the way that Expert plays Garrosh oh. is actually their build. As we already see a kill against Johanna, actually cutting us off here for a second. But yeah, Garrosh is pretty interesting the way that they played. You already have body check taken as a level 1 talent, and that is a bit of a focus that Bad Benny puts into the hero when he plays him. But look how they're utilizing this Garrosh. They dropped down the Silence, focused down the Johanna, and the moment the Iron Skin went away, they threw Johanna back into the Silence to make it harder for her to come from the escape. Pretty cool usage there of Stukov. Yeah, it's definitely one way that you can play with it. Once again, Wolf Joe is actually being caught here, and oh yeah, that didn't look too good, but he's able to somehow move out. Decides to actually move a little bit farther in just on the off chance that someone moves in with another kill. <laughs> But yeah, so we actually are going to see quite a bit of spec into a body check. So Brute Force usually follows as a level 7 talent for him too. And it's pretty interesting actually. So it's one of the few teams that I've seen run with this build and Bad Benny really likes it. So it just gives you another activatable that you can use for a little bit of burst and also healing reduction later. And the cool thing is you can actually use it also against Ancestral if you do it properly. But especially against the double support, you are more or less always guaranteed to get value out of the level 7 talent. Well, let's watch and see how that unfolds. We've had two ganks so far, one on the Rhaegar and one on the Sonya that has not panned out fully. The minion wave being near for Sonya made it hard for Garrosh to land his uh, throw ability, so therefore he missed out on it. But still, you can see the plan from Team Expert. Keep moving in and put playing ducks on the back foot. So far, it's been working out. Ooh, they're going for an Ariel, but with the minion wave being in the way, Ariel is fine until Drag comes out. And the silence, yeah. That was, again, another good kill here. And 
It's really... Oh, there we go! They try and go for Nanda again, and they nearly get the kill, but it's not quite enough. But Team Expert is putting the pressure on from the get-go, and they have a lot of annoying ability here to work around. And if you're looking, for example, simply on the Gravity Labs follow-ups from Kalthas, the silence that you have there as well, a lot of fantastic tools for them that they are currently using. And of course, all or a lot hinges on Garrosh and him trying to just drag everyone in and throw them into the rest of the team. Alright, we'll continue to watch. Is it kind of... Is it bad if I'm kind of cheering for Expert because I want Garrosh to get his first win? Is that <laughs> is that incorrect of me? I feel like I need to justify all my bans that I have in Hero League. <laughs> I, I think that's fair. Okay, good. Nah, Garrosh, it's, all, it's weird to me too. I mean, at this point, you kind of feel bad for Garrosh and you want him to get a win because I know that he's doing well in North America, but over here in Europe, he is 0-6 or 0-7. Tricks are so savage, he's turning into a gray mane. Ooh, I can grow out my beard. I can get older, too. Let's do that. Oh, God, please don't put ideas in his hat. We already <laughs> tried to help him shave off that thing. Another combo comes out. Bad Benny is able to allow Nande to escape as he seeps on by. Wolf Joe bringing in the heal, but the turn-in was the main target. A few gems do get dropped off. Yep, and uh, with that, we have 25. So the dogs actually have a bit of a lead when it comes to the gem count, but... I don't know, it just uh, that was interesting. Wow. So the pull went off, but the Tainment Strike also connected. That looked really cool. Like, I don't know, that was kind of funny. That so was full anime right there. Garrosh gets whipped by Oriole, but still the Jack is in. Either way, the cool thing here, the thing so far for me is that I really feel Expert is the one that is posing the bigger threat. And all of a sudden, again, here comes that quick jump on Nanda over Bad Benny as the throw kicks in. And we have the level 7 talent now taken, as I said before. So we have Intimidation now, which makes that uh, you have the, uh, uh, sorry, Brute Force, of course, where the healing is reduced for 4 seconds. Gotta that commend the playing Ducks, though. They've been doing a really good job of dropping some gems off every time Garrosh goes for an engage. 43 to 15. Yeah, they do well in the turn, and it's just... I don't know, I'm always a little bit afraid when I see them currently playing with their double support since I feel after game one, Expert has absolutely stepped it up. And we have so many control tools on the side of Team Expert that I'm pretty sure that for the Ducks, just one misstep could really mean the end of the team fight. We've seen that in a few of the games so far. And if you have Garrosh at the front and then you have these follow-ups with stuns, with the Haka drags and with also the Gravity Labs, I think it's going to be pretty rough for the playing Ducks to play around that in the long run. For me, it always feels like one step over the line, and all of a sudden you're dead. But so far they've done really well. You're absolutely right. They really used the space that was created to turn in, and if they get the first web we wave, would be great. But Expert is the one with the lead and experience. Expert is now turning in as well. They're one away from getting that 50. Wolfjo is actually able to get his turn in here on the side. The sound's coming a little bit too late, and the playing Ducks will have the first turn in of the game. And if they can gain some momentum with it, that would be actually great for them, because right now they are, as I said, slightly behind. So if they are now able to break at least through the towers and pick up some experience and structures, they can close that gap and maybe even head into level 10 a bit faster. But Team Expert has so far done a pretty decent job with all of this, and they are already on level 9. And as long as they muster a decent defense, they should be able to maintain their lead. But yeah, Garrosh up at the top, looking to see if he can, of course, get a quick throw over the towers. That's not the case, but they defend quite easily against that web weaver. Top all cleared up, middle as well being worked on. The bottom side is the one that's a little bit more healthy, but with ADRD coming down to help out a thorough, be able to start working on it. A combo does come out. It was not brushing on a Thurno and get him low, but it looks like all we're losing in the turrets in the middle and some damage on the bottom side. So Team Expert about to hit level 10 and are in a good spot to clear out the first turn in. And interestingly enough, they have actually a wave that takes down towers up at the top lane. So considering that the Webweaver wave hit for the opponent, that was a good move up top. They have now the level 10 abilities, and that means that they should be able to turn in, especially with most of the players for the Ducks already up at the top, so that creates space for Bad Benny to complete it, and he is going to get it here. So that means that it's now time for Team Expert to move through the structures. Heroic's ability have been taken, nothing too crazy just yet, only Garrosh still waiting for his talent, and it is the Warlord's challenge. Warlord's talent, so looking for those taunts, looking to force those fights and land down on target. Sony would be a good one for them to burn down quickly, making it a bit harder for that front line to be effective. 
Team Expert now pushes in with three Web Weavers in all of our lanes, and let's see how they're going to handle the movement as they're setting up for a potential gank on the bottom side. With Rhaegar scouting it out thanks to Nande, they're just going to go ahead and rotate to middle instead. Yeah, a lot, of, uh, a lot of focus on the mid lane right now. Trying to make sure that they are using their AoEs, and uh, that also means Phoenix is being dropped right away, uh, dropping that Night Cam too. So. The most pressure comes from that mid lane battle. We still have heroes up at the top and at the bottom, and Expert is already an entire level ahead at this point. And there's a bit of an attempt to kind of engage in the mid lane, with even the Blessed Shield being thrown out by Johanna, but that's of no consequence whatsoever. And Nick is now starting to move out. Uh, it might even be ganked here, but he has put a significant amount of pressure onto the fort, and that fort is going to fall to the Webweaver any moment now. Yeah, Greymate even sneaks away too, so Team Expert is able to handle the four-man movement onto Garrosh and Greymate, and they get a fort out of it even as well on the top lane. Good for them. They also, also ha uh, they also, saying it three times, have a turn-in available, which they'll be able to drop off in a few seconds. Yeah, this is definitely a sign to, oh my god, with the kill now coming out, the Warlord's Challenge has been used and Johanna is dead. This is starting to uh, get a bit ice, dicey for the playing ducks because the level 13 talent is going to be ready in a few seconds for Team Expert. That gives them another talent advantage and therefore the lead here. And they also have the turn in potential. And a 5 versus 4 at this point on the map is an issue. Bad Benny is low, but that's not really the biggest problem here. He gets that armor. And now we have them on 13 talents with a camp pushing through the bot lane, double up taken on level 13 for Garrosh. So he's even harder to kill at this point. And yeah, this is starting to become a bit snowbally. We'll see if they can make this work out for them. They got the Gyrus on the bottom side. Gonna have KG clear out the waves, and the Web Weaver turn in should connect here. And they'll be able to start pushing in the lanes once again, middle and bottom side. That bottom four already nice and chunked, especially with the Giants helping out. Yeah, but Benny is in the mid lane, and they are already starting to prepare this one. So they can take the fountain down quite easily. They can just simply move in, put some pressure onto the fort before the web weavers are even here. Bot lane is naturally going to start to pressure in. But the one thing that Eternal at least does is move to the top lane and uh, push this lane out a bit more. So he's going to buy some more time uh, so that they can defend before the web weaver at the top lane becomes a concern. He even focuses on it right away, but that leaves the Haka for a long time alone at the bottom. He clears the wave, then moves top and is now going to try and push this lane in even further. But they just have to be careful since in the mid lane it's currently a Five versus four. No, I found it moving straight down, but I don't think that he will be able to save the fort. Ducks clear up middle pretty easily, but the bottom lane is what they miss out on. They will lose the fort down there. So they at least hold on to the middle lane for a few moments. They are going to hit 13 2, which does slow down the push here from Team Expert. Unless they can get an engage, they do find an Ariel. They will throw her. She does get taunted. There's the silence. She will be able to use the ages, but Ariel eventually falls. Yeah, Ariel is down, and they're trying to guard the gems, but Nande moves in and wants to take them. Tries to turn it around even with Sonya moving in. Keep in mind, Webweavers at the top are still there. Kirsten just flails everybody away and Bad Benny survives. But the Webweavers are already knocking onto the keep itself. Actually, the wall trying to burst through that. AD already finds himself in a bit of a pickle, but so far still alive. And the rest of the team, Bad Benny throws him out. Might fall, but nope, Stukov is there and heals him up again. Nice damage there from Nick, dropping on the Cursed Bullet, also hitting a massive cocktail on multiple members, allowing for Garrosh to escape and survive. His Warlord's Taunt will be up available in a few seconds, and Team Expert takes the opportunity. They won a team fight pretty well there, got some damage uh, done on the entire team, forcing playing ducks to back up and heal up, so Team Expert just rushes to the top lane. Yeah, they're sneaking the boss, they had the Haka at the bot lane showing and just pushing in, and that boss is going to be an easy grab for them, just because they're so incredibly fast with it as is. So, yeah, Garrosh is just anchoring the side, making sure nobody can move in. Boss is claimed, and now they can move through the top lane. And if you look at their experience, they are not only two levels ahead, they're about to hit level 16. So that's an extra talent. The Ducks have finally caught their 13 talent, but once that expert hits the next level, they will once again have the talent advantage over their opponent. And with the boss heading the top lane, the Webber is being turned in from the playing Ducks. Team Expert should have an easy time clearing out this middle and bottom lane, which is going to be the main target for them. So they're sitting pretty happy. In fact, they're moving in and trying to kill a fort when the Web Weavers spawn. Yeah, Web Weavers are spawning. Those are not going to do anything. And so far, Team Expert hasn't lost a fort yet. And here come the level 16 talents with Garrosh going straight into the mortal combo. We're having at the same time now, I mean, 
overall this is just getting rough, especially here. Yeah, there's another quick throw. Eternal low eats the bullet. Silence comes out, but Nanda with a flank is saving Johanna. Uh, uh, sorry, sa saving Sonia. Sonia will be saved here. 16 connected. The Webweaver in the bottom is going to be finally dealt with. The fort doesn't fall down. Team Expert is looking great. So far, the Ducks need to find a moment to get an engage, but they need a level and a half before they'll be able to be on even talents against their opponent. They should be able to manage that. Uh, they already have a top lane pushing in. If they can get someone out there to soak those minions and get cleared out, that'd be good. They do finally send the Sonya. And now it's all about guarding this turn in and making sure your opponent doesn't get it too easily. Yeah, the Ducks are... The Ducks are in a huge problem right now because they have zero kills. The engage potential is not all that great outside of Johanna going in with the Blessed Shield and using uh, her Conviction to move in with Condemn. So uh, right now, they just need kills. They need some kind of momentum. They haven't taken a single structure yet outside of Towers. So no fort has been eliminated. Their talent down still. And if Team Expert is just trying to push the envelope here a little bit, they should be able to get another turn in for themselves. And of course, for Expert, the goal has to be try and get keeps before our opponent is even with us. And that's mostly towards level 20. And they've nearly already taken the keep at the top lane, thanks to the boss that they took earlier. Team Expert is just playing a really solid game. They had great rotation in the early game. They had get their kills. And right now, they are just running with that advantage. They are playing this extremely coordinated and disciplined. I like this play here where they get the mercenary camp, pushes it in the middle, which forces the plane nooks to head down toward this area. They should be able to head to the top lane and make sure that lane keeps pushing in to get that web weaver closer. Ooh, they even go in for a fight. They'll find a non day. They'll get him low on health. Takes a little bit of damage there, but he's able to walk away. And here comes Sonya from the side. He's going in. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> and immediately thrown out. So, yep, not happening. Sorry, dude. Silence thrown down, covering uh, Bad Benny. And again, the tra attempt to re-engage, but good drag attempt here. Lens comes out. Once again, Bad Benny on the move. Ah, and just barely misses out on the drag and the throw. But the Web Weavers are now pushing in too. And the longer the Ducks are busy in the mid lane here, the more value the Web Weaver at the top is going to get. That's where currently Sonya is headed. And Thero misses out on the drag again as the rest of the team moves straight into the middle. Can always rotate back to the bot lane too if they want to. Top lane being pressured, and Bad Benny aiming for Sport Billy, but not getting him. Getting close here. Will this Webweaver be able to grab his last couple of shots in the keep? The minions are stacking up. Sonya doing her best to control it. It is low on health, but the fight continues in the middle. Totem comes out with Nande charging forward. They're focusing Garrosh trying to slow him down, but Nick actually getting chunked as well. Here's Sonya on the back right, but a thorough ready for it, able to handle. Bad Benny low gets hit, but not down yet. Out comes the Phoenix, and once more, Cursor with the flails. Top keep is down, bottom keep being attacked. We have Rhaegar dropping, trying to get the Ancestral through, and indeed does, but once again, the level seven talent that we are seeing from Garrosh having huge value here. Brute force able to reduce the healing received, and Sonya falls as a result. Or Billy dodge and does get away from the fight. Ariel single life here may have been enough to allow playing Ducks to have their teammates spawn up and come back in and prevent the game from being over. But Team Expert still continues to move forward. They're going straight for uh. a keep. They find a Lenara and they kill her. Team Expert now opens the keep on the bottom side and with Lenara being poked off, there could be more taken away. Yeah, that looked for a second like she used the leaping strike straight into the middle of the opponent. And of course, that was Garrosh at work once again instead. Three kills during that entire engagement, and now we still have a five versus four with the last keep being attacked here. And they drop it. All keeps are down. Three level lead for Expert. They have level 20 talents now, and that is insane. Not a fort has been eliminated by the playing ducks, and they themselves have lost everything on this map. And Team Expert in two games have yet to have even a kill happen against him with the playing Ducks. Remember, there was a, a bunch of kills in the last game, and this one they still have yet to get a kill. 23 to 0 in the last two games so far on the kill count. So combine those both, 31 to 0. Yes, I can do math there. Team Expert. No, you can't because last game was 15 0. This is 8 oh, 0, so it was 23 0. No. Welcome to the series, Tim. I can't do math, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you were so proud. I was so happy. I double checked it <laughs> twice in my head. I was like, well, 23 plus 7 is 30. So if you add one, that's 31. 100%. 
Oh, God. Well, playing Ducks, fighting for the tournament life here. They are down all three keeps. They have catapults pushing into every single lane. They are one gym away from a turn in. Uh, they need. They have all 60 gems now, so if they do drop them off, it'll be fine. They're going to go for a fight, 17 to 20. They're putting damage into Garrosh, but Kirsten says no and slaps him away. And that has been the story of the game, I feel. Every single time when the Ducks finally got an engagement, Kirsten goes in with a flail and pushes them out. Once <laughs> again, it's happening once more. And Bad Benny goes in and tries to get a Warlord's Challenge already being used against Nande. He is low and he falls, and that's 33 gems that they just lost as well. We have the bot lane pushing, the top lane is pushing. A flamethrower now chosen on the side of ADR a bit earlier here. But Benny moves away, doesn't fall, but it's Rhaegar that dies and the Haka even gets out as Nick jumps in and commits for third kill. The Ducks are down to two player, Lunara and Oriel, the only two surviving, and Ethero is trying to now get Chris. Whereas we have, yeah, that might be the end of him too. Nick is already shocking around here on the other side, but not even needed. Lunara is dead. The team is wiped. That's it, team expert. We'll go ahead and run straight towards the core here. And after an interesting game number one, the last three games, they have been quite dominant in the series. Team expert gets a three to one over the playing ducks. GG and well played, the experts with the victory. So, Tim, 15 kills last game, 13 this game. I'm not doing it. It's 28. Proud of you. Nailed it. 3 to 1 victory here for Team Expert. It was a little bit worrisome after game number one. I felt like the playing ducks were coming out, being on fire. I was having flashbacks to the Fnatic series, but Team Expert comes into game number two and they shut it down. Engages were just a massive problem for them on Tomb and. They got the first turn in, but they really never really got enough out of it. So mm -hmm. the kill serve here. Also, Garrosh with the first victory, actually. So Garrosh has his first victory in Europe. And in one of the fights, really, the level 7 talent, the, the heal reduction, mm -hmm. Sonia got the Ancestral and it didn't do anything. She just like stood there, Ancestral goes through, and she just dies. That's one of the worst so feelings. You see that big green thing yeah. come in, and you're all excited. Especially since Rhaegar died for it. So he dies at that moment. He's probably super happy that he at least gets the save out and then not even that happens. So both of them fall. But yeah, kills in the last two games have been a massive issue. It, both times we had a double support composition on the side of the playing ducks. Both times they just didn't have enough to really get these kills in. And it was very reminiscent when you think about Infernal Shrines, how ETC stage dived in and they all focused mm. on him, but they just didn't have the the burn down potential to kill him right away. And then when he survives, they have blown everything on him, spent all their resources, they don't have anything. And then, yeah, it's just a turnaround by, uh, by two experts. So feels a bit rough for the, the Ducks, especially after uh, on the first map, they looked really strong. Missing out on that slight oomph. Team expert, though, getting the victory here. Important that they get the victory, too, with their loss of Dignitas, the good guys. There was a moment here where they might not get the standing they want. They obviously want to have the best standing possible and even want to contest Dignitas here for that second spot going to the HTC Finals. So Team expert coming out with the victory. It's definitely going to help them end the standings, especially moving forward towards the playoffs. Because remember, we have a total of three weeks left this weekend, and then we have two more after this, Week 9 and Week 10, to figure out who will be gearing up for those HTC Finals. We continue to get closer and closer towards BlitzCon. And for the Ducks, it was definitely a setback. They would have loved to get a win in the series against Team Expert, but their most important match is going to be the one against Team Liquid, mm -hmm. which in itself is already a bit crazy, but it's still one of the important series for the Ducks. Of course, they can also make other wins happen later on, uh, but it could I mean, we could actually see Team Liquid fall into the Crucible. That could happen. And that's just crazy after they dominated yeah. phase one for so long. And then in phase two, they look really solid also in part one of phase two. Uh, went to the Western Clash and now all of a sudden we're talking about them potentially being eliminated from the league even. That is crazy. Yeah, I mean, last week we were talking about it and we were feeling off saying it, like we had yeah. things incorrect. But now with us seeing their last couple of games, it's starting to really make sense why they are starting to fall down and they really need to pull it together, especially against the playing Ducks, which is going to be a uh, fun series that will be happening this weekend. But for now, Let's go ahead and talk about Expert. Expert gets the victory here over the Playing Ducks, and we have ADRD to come in and chat with. ADRD, welcome to the HEC. Congratulations on your victory today, man. How are you feeling? Hello, thank you. Uh, I think it's important for us to win again after the loss versus TDG mm -hmm. and another loss versus Dignitas. So we were not doing that good in standing, so I hope we can come back to higher places. 
Well, you guys are the first team to win with Garrosh in HCC Europe. How does it feel to champion the new hero? Oh, I think if like there's a hero that doesn't work and he's not used that much, then our team is the one that will bring it. So <laughs> I think it's pretty good versus some team comps. Yeah. And I think it was really good versus the team comp that playing Dax picked, so we just played it. Well, you made it work and we appreciate it. I'm going to send you over to Caldor. Well, first of all, congratulations, of course. Um, my question mostly about game number one. How did you guys feel after you lost the first map? Was that was a flashback to the series against TGG where you guys worried that you would fall apart there? Or did you just say, okay, draft didn't work out for us and we're going to take it from the second game on? Uh, so I think the first game was mostly on draft because our idea was to win top with Tassadar Iridan, but that didn't work out. So we didn't have any pressure on the map. So it was hard to do anything from that point on. And after the second game, I think we were very confident that we'll take the series. Okay. So uh, the, uh, the n another question. Uh, the battle for Medivh between the two teams was actually kind of interesting to see. Was it a bit weird for you since usually Medivh gets banned out for you against you guys immediately because of you, but now you have a counterpart on the other side of the plane, Ducks and Sport Billy, that also showed some great games there? Uh, so I think... I'm not sure if Sport Billy is not that good on Medivh or if he was like having bad games, but I think he didn't complete his Master Touch in both games. Uh, and like we are not worried about Medivh that much, but the problem was that we didn't practice versus it because basically almost no teams play it in scrims or in tournaments. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Fnatic will play it, but versus Fnatic it's hard to deal with anything they play. <laughs> so <laughs> I think the, the worst part was that we're not used to playing against it. Have you guys actually some crazy drafts that you are willing to show in uh, in other games maybe? Or are you currently just like trying to play a little bit more standard? I mean, we talked about Garrosh making an appearance again, even though most of you doesn't play it, but something completely out of the norm. Do you guys have some pocket drafts that you want to show in the future? Yeah, so I think we will prepare a few drafts for playoffs because our chances of getting second place are very low now. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we can make it. Like it's up to Dignitas, but I think they will win all the remaining games. So we have one strategy already that is prepared that I think people will like, the, but we, we will not show it unless we really have to. So it will be probably in playoffs. All right. Makes perfect sense. Thank you very much. I look forward to that. Now, you did mention Fnatic. You're facing off against them next. The last time you guys faced off, they did pretty well against you guys in the Grand Finals at the Western Clash. Any early thoughts about that matchup? Uh, so I think this matchup is kind of awkward because Fnatic, I think they're comfortable that they will take first place already. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if they win versus TGG next, they're already guaranteed to qualify. I'm not, not sure, didn't calculate everything. So it's kind of not that important match for them. And also for us, it's also not that important. So we probably, us and them, will not show anything, like any crazy strats. So we just play standard and play it out. It will be definitely very hard to win. Oh, I still look forward to a standard matchup regardless. It'll be a fun one to watch you guys face off. So now, with that being said, it's all time for shoutouts here. Team Expert, it has the floor here. ADRD, feel free to lay it on the people at home. So shoutouts to Team Expert and all our fans, especially those that cheered in chat. So uh, keep on cheering for us. Perfect. Well said there. ADRD keeping it short and clean. Congratulations to Expert as they get a victory over the playing Ducks. Let's go ahead and update the standings here and see where they're at. Did you hear him click so at this? They were already practicing. <laughs> already ready to kill. He's they playing. Already, back to scrims right away. He was, <laughs> was already playing again. They're dedicated. Well, Team Expert, Tricked Esports are currently tied with the 6-5. Tricked Esports a little bit ahead here at the number three and the number four. But our top four here, Fnatic, Dignitas, Trick, and Team Expert. Anything shocking to you? For me, it's shocking who we're missing. Team Liquid, who are all the way down at the bottom of the standings right now. And yeah, they are behind the Zealots. Zealots have really started to push forward in the standings. As you said before, we still have a few weeks left, so it's not all said and done just yet. But just seeing Team Liquid down there, I don't know, it just feels wrong. But at it this point, it is. it's deserved. I mean, you can't argue that. It's, they have a huge problem performing when it matters. And that's 
very atypical, but at this point I'm asking myself what can they do to really get out of it. That today was an important match. The one against the playing Ducks is going to be even more important. And Team Liquid is just, I don't know, they're just completely falling off there. Falling flat for the moment. Well, let's go and look at tomorrow's schedule. What games can you expect here in Europe? Who will be facing off to start the day? It's going to be Team Good Guys as they take on Fnatic. And yes, ADRD was correct. If Fnatic wins this series, they are qualified for the HEC Finals. Not first place, but they are qualified right away. Most likely going to end the series or the season, but we will know for sure that we will see them at BlizzCon. Now we have Team Dignitas going up against the Zealots. Dignitas looking incredibly powerful right now. Definitely back to the Dignitas of old. A lot more mage heavy as well. But Zealots, of course, they are a bit of a surprise in part two of phase two. And they are going to try make an upset happen once again a little later on tomorrow. Tempo Storm against Lag Force in North America in roll 20. Trying to go for that 15 and 0 map score against Even and Death. Be a fun one, man. Watching Roll20 as of late has been quite a treat. I try to make sure that whenever I go home, I have that few hours to watch their games because they've been awesome to watch. Now, that's going to be a good one for tomorrow. But for today, our matches have all been figured out here as Trick Esports got a victory over Team Liquid. And we had Team Expert take on the Playing Ducks. So we have lots more HEC Europe happening this weekend, so make sure you tune in when you can. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And as we said, especially the series between Team Liquid and the Playing Ducks is going to be a big one. Sunday. Also, tomorrow we could see Fnatic qualify for the HTC Finals. All right, well, we'll see you tomorrow, and we'll see if Fanatic will qualify. That's it here for Europe. North America is up next.